Well, good morning and welcome to morning prayer uh, at St. Luke's West. Um, St. Luke's is on the road, it seems, these days, and uh, we're doing morning prayer from my living room in my house on West Billings. And if you look around, uh, we have a Christmas atmosphere. Over my shoulder, you'll see up on the top shelf, uh, the manger. And over here on my other side is a English village and a tree behind me. So I'm pleased to be with you today. Um, my mother Melinda is on vacation, so I'm stepping in for her this, this, uh, this weekend, this first Sunday of Christmas. If you're going to follow along in the service, you'll need to have your prayer book or uh, a service order that you've run off of the uh, internet or some such thing. Print it off. And we're on page 75 in the Book of Common Prayer. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We continue with the confession on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved ourselves as we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Continue with the invitatory. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia! To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia! Turning to page 82, we continue with the Jubilate, at the bottom of the page saying together, Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. The sheep of his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 147. If you have it, uh, you may read along with me or just listen. We're doing verses. <clears throat> 1 through 12. Alleluia! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant it is to honor Him with praise! The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and sets them all calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. 
make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of the horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Our first lesson for this second Sunday of Christmas is found in the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself, with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be called a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Here ends the lesson. Our response, <clears throat> excuse me, our response to this reading from Isaiah is the canticle, a song of Isaiah, of Zechariah, found on page 92 in your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was an oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give us people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now hear a word, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord.
Our response to this reading uh, from Galatians is found on page 95, Canticle 21, You Are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the glorious company of all apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring to us your saints to glory everlasting. Now we turn to the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all that might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But, all, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me first of all remind you that because Christmas Day was on the 25th, that does not mean that Christmas is past. As Episcopalians, as Anglicans, uh, Christmas is a part of the season of Christmas, which lasts for 12 days. You might remember the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, in which on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves. And on the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. And it goes on. But we are today in the third day of Christmas. Um, 
And during this time, from now until Epiphany, every day is the day of Christmas in which we celebrate the gift of the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, God with us, Jesus. Christmas ends, uh, of course, the twelfth day is, for most people, the day before Epiphany, which is the 6th of January, the moment when the three kings visit the infant Jesus, deliver their gifts and go back into the world and tell out to the whole world the birth of the Savior who had come into the world to shine light onto the darkness. The darkness that covers the sin, dislocation, and error of humanity. The good news during this season is that we have Jesus born into our human existence to lead us in the spiritual, moral, and ethical decisions that will reconcile us to and bring us into a relationship with God. Now the particulars of the story of the Incarnation, when, came, when God came to dwell with us, the story of divine love becoming flesh and living with us in human history. Of the timeless story of the birth of Jesus to Mary and Joseph in an obscure place in Palestine, Bethlehem in Judea. Jesus, born of a woman, in the same way that all of us are born, bursting out of the womb into the world and taking that first gasp of life-giving oxygen. Now, this is an experience that all of us as humans can identify with because this is a universally shared experience. Also shared with Jesus, a human just like us. However, since Jesus is for us both human and divine, human as we hear it in the story of Luke, but divine as we hear in the story of John. This is another side of the story of Christmas. John's Gospel gives us a different understanding of how Jesus was revealed to the world. He wasn't born in a birth narrative through John, but rather John plunges us into a cosmic event. Um, it echoes the book of Genesis. In the beginning. In the beginning. John is clearly saying that Jesus is the Word. Is that Word that was with God in the beginning. And it's through the Word that the world was created. So, John's soaring eloquent words take us outside of human time and space as if we are outside of our three-dimensional world, maybe sitting in outer space kind of watching creation take place before our very eyes. We are getting a glimpse of the Trinity, the Trinity in action. Jesus the Christ, God personified, coming to us as the light, the light that bursts upon the earth, the saving light that will shine through the darkness, which I take to mean darkness as brokenness and sin, that that separates us from God. And this is good, because through the Incarnation, God, in the person of Jesus, seeks after us, as if we are lost sheep to be found and brought into grace and to become children of God. Then in the midst of this splendid, brilliant, dazzling, awesome moment we hear there was a man sent from God whose name was John whose, he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him he himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world this is John the Baptist as he is known in the other three Gospels. But in today's reading of John's Gospel, his job description is not to baptize. His job description is to point, to be a witness to the Messiah, to the one coming as the Deliverer, 
the one long promised in Scripture, as we may have gathered from that which we heard today. This John is the model for followers of Jesus. That is, to point to be a witness to the Christ, who signals hope, hope to the broken, hope to the marginalized, hope to those who have fallen, hope to those suffering during this time of COVID and the results of that COVID season that we are in the midst of, visited upon our world, bringing death, ruined economies, suffering in our own families, and so on. This Christmas we celebrate Jesus as both the infant in the manger and as the word present with God in the beginning. I pray that during this season, our faith and the faith of our community may grow and prosper the love planted in us by God in Christ. May our faith and witness point to the one who shines light and hope out into the world, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now we will continue um, with the Apostles' Creed, which you find on page 96 in your Book of Common Prayer. We say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue on page 97 with the prayers. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Close your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect appointed for this second Sunday or first Sunday following Christmas, is Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you 
Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn to our prayers this day. Prayers of the people. We're using Form 2. If you want to follow along, uh, it's on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. You won't need to, because there are no responses. So if you'd like to just listen, please do that. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Marty, our bishop, for Joan, Gary, Stephen, Jerry, and Melinda, our Billings priests, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who see God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Rob Laird and Pat Samora. Pray for all those who have died. I ask your prayers for those on our prayer list, including Stacy, Marley, Diana, Alice, Marlis, Carrie, Jean, Larry, Victoria, Cassandra, Kay, Jerry, Virginia, Lisa, Bob, Carolyn, Ken, Janie, Gail, Rose, Sandra, and any others you care to name at this time. We also pray for the members of St. Luke's Prayer Chain during a time of much grief and loss. We pray the Lord will support and uphold them in this ministry. I ask your prayers for the men and women serving in the United States military and other dangerous professions, especially Chad, Chris, Jason, Jeremy, Kendall, Levi, Michael, Stephanie, Vandy, please and any others that you would care to name at this time. Pray for these heroes. I ask your prayers for the animals all around us, domestic, wild, feral, stray, beasts of burden, animals we use for food and entertainment, and all the beloved pets. Pray for the well-being of all God's creatures. I ask your prayers for this season of holy wonder taking time to pause and reflect on the true meaning of Christmas. Give thanks to the birth of the Messiah. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for Christians and other denominations in the work of the ecumenical movement. His Holiness Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, his All Holiness Archbishop Bartholomew of Constantinople, New Rome and Ecumenical Patriarch, 
the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, Bishop Ivan M. Abrams, General Secretary, World Methodist Council, the Reverend Chris Ferguson, General Secretary of the World Communion of Reformed Churches. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for Christ Church in Kalispell, Donnell O'Flynn, Rector. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for Christ Church and Kalispell, Donnell O'Flynn, Rector. I just said that. Okay. In the Perry cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for Nancy McManus, Kim McNamara, Jim and Pat Mertz, Dan and Donna Miller. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have great grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And now it's time to give thanks, and we do that by turning to the general thanksgiving on page 101. saying, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies and with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final blessing today. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you and grant that those whom you have nourished with your word may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with all his joy and peace. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, that concludes our time of worship together. Thank you for tuning in. Remember that uh, Mother Melinda is on vacation through this week. Uh, she'll be back with us next weekend, and uh, I assume she'll be conducting our uh, Sunday services. So have a blessed day and continue to uh, remember that each day during the 12 days of Christmas is a day of Christmas, which we celebrate our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come among us as one of us to shed light upon the darkness. Good day.